friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another baking series. I am so excited to share this recipe with you. This is my Easter baking series. So as you know, I do like to share some baked good recipes with you throughout the year and what better time than the holidays. So this is a sugar cookie, not just your ordinary sugar cookie, but a frosted sugar cookie with candy on top that is WW friendly. You heard me sugar cookie with frosting and candy. So excited to share this recipe with you guys. So if you wanna see step-by-step -step how to make the recipe, check out the description box below for the recipe itself. Just keep watching. For Easter baking series, we are going to be making super soft sugar cookies with frosting topped with candy that are WW friendly. If you are a fan of those loft house sugar cookies, these are going to be similar to those. So let me show you what we are putting in our sugar cookies. So you're going to need some all purpose flour, some sort of sugar substitute. I'm gonna use Truvia. My points were calculated using this sugar cane blend, which does have smart points. So if you use an alternative sugar that does not have points, Stevia or one of those, you can modify the points to the recipe. I also have baking powder, baking soda, vanilla extract. I'm going to be using Pillsbury sugar-free frosting. If you do not have access to this, it is in my Amazon store down in the description box, or you can make your own frosting using Cool Whip or Swerve or anything that you wanna do, but I am going to tell you the points using this frosting. I also have some fun neon food coloring, some light butter, some organic eggs or any type of egg. We're actually only going to be using the yolk. And then I'm going to top mine with Whoppers mini eggs. So let's get started on our sugar cookies. So the first thing we need to do for our cookies is we're gonna go ahead and take our flour. Here we have two and a half cups of flour. We're gonna put the flour in a separate bowl. We wanna do our dry ingredients prior to our wet ingredients. And then in my little red bowl here, I have my leveling agents. So I have three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of baking powder. We're gonna go ahead and add that to our bowl. And then we're just gonna give this a nice whisk together. Just make sure that that baking powder and soda get mixed in with all of your flour. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna set this aside and we're gonna get started on our wet ingredients. Next, we're gonna do our wet ingredients. So you have one cup, or I'm sorry, one and a half cups of Truvia or any type of sweetener alternative that you want to use. And then I also have one cup of, I can't believe it's not butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Now you can either measure it out in a cup or you can figure out how many grams by Googling the grams of butter in one cup and measure it out on your food scale. So I went ahead and did it on my food scale and then just did it into a measuring cup. So either way works and you're gonna take your hand mixer and you're just going to give this a nice mix until your butter and your sugar are nice and combined. And then we'll be adding in some of our additional wet ingredients. Once you get your sugar and butter nice and creamed together, the next step is we are going to be adding in our vanilla extract. This is my all time favorite, the Trader Joe's. So we wanna add in about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we are also going to add in three egg yolks. And then we'll take a spoon to that, mix that all together, get it kind of nice and combined before we add in our dry ingredients. So our flour, our baking soda, and our baking powder. The recipe specifically says do not over mix. So I'm just gonna gently incorporate in the eggs and the vanilla. And then we will go ahead and add in our bowl of our flour, baking soda, baking powder. And again, we don't want to over mix. So we want to be really careful to just get everything nice and incorporated. And then we will be ready to get these into the oven on a cookie sheet first and into the oven. Next, once your dough is all nice and mixed together, we are going to take a cookie scoop and we are going to scoop out our cookies. We want them about two inches apart so that they don't bleed into each other. My goal is to get either 24 or 36 cookies out of my dough and that will determine the number of smart points. So I'm going to scoop it out, 
fill my tray, see how many I can get, and then we'll be ready to pop these into the oven. But these already look so delicious. So here we have 15 balled of cookie dough. I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the oven at 350 until they are cooked through, and I'll continue to scoop and see exactly how many cookies I end up with. All right, our cookies have cooled, so here is what they look like all nice and cooled. You did see that I had mixed my frosting, so I'm gonna go ahead and start frosting the cookies. So I'm gonna take the cookie, I'm gonna start with the pink, and I'm just going to put a fairly, not a thin layer, but an average layer of frosting on top of the cookie. We want less than a tablespoon because we want one smart point of frosting per cookie, which would be less than a tablespoon in order to achieve uh, the one smart point. I pulled out my little green Wilton sprinkles. These are left over from St. Patrick's Day. I am going to sprinkle those right on top of my cookie so that it looks all nice and festive for Easter. And then over here I have my Robin's eggs. So I am gonna go ahead and add three Robin's egg to each cookie. So it looks like a nest. And three of the Whoppers Robin eggs is one smart point. So there is our completed Easter cookie. Isn't that adorable. So I'm going to go ahead and set those aside. We'll repeat that with the purple frosting. So let's frost one of our cookies with the purple as well. And I'm just going to go through and frost all of my cookies. I ended up getting 32 total out of my batch of dough. So I will be counting my points according to 32. So again, sprinkles, robin eggs, and ready to go onto the sheet to continue to cool. So cute, how fun are these for Easter? So let me get everything frosted and then I will be back to give you the smart points and show you the finished product. So here are our completed cookies on my adorable little Easter plate. These are so good, I just had one. These are amazing, they are soft, they are sweet, that crunch of that Whoppers egg on top is so good. Look at these up close with all of that frosting, three of those delicious eggs on top. These cookies are only four smart points a piece. Four smart points, including the frosting and including the Whoppers candy on top. So if you are looking for a Easter WW friendly treat on Easter or leading up to Easter to keep you away from all that Easter candy, four points for a frosted sugar cookie is definitely going to steer you clear of all of the non-WW friendly Easter candy. I highly recommend you make these cookies. They are seriously so delicious. Thank you for joining me on this Easter baking series. I hope you enjoyed seeing the sugar cookie recipe with that delicious frosting and those Whopper eggs. Hello, it is complete decadence. And isn't it crazy? It's WW friendly. So if you're looking for something to share with your family or to take to an Easter event, this is a fantastic recipe. No one will ever know that it's WW friendly. They taste absolutely amazing. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Please take a moment and give this one a thumbs up comment below. Let me know if you're going to try these sugar cookies out, not only for Easter, but really any time of the year. And I want to wish you all a fantastic, happy Easter, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.